Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and as the next wipe is almost upon us, it got me thinking. Will the Bitcoin farm be worth making in the next patch? Historically, most players have worked towards completing it, but since the beginning of 1212, we've had a massive drawdown in crypto prices, which in turn brought down the value of Bitcoin in the game because they are tied together, in some fashion at least. In the latest dip, this pulled them down below 100,000 rubles for the first time ever, I think, which puts building the hideout module very much into question. We're obviously going to have to make some big approximations. Number one, the Bitcoin stays around 120,000 rubles per coin. Number two, the actual prices of the barter items to make the modules in the first place. And three, that none of these modules or prerequisites are changed in the next patch. With that said, we can estimate the Bitcoin farm level one to cost around 750,000 in parts. Then we need to fill it with 10 cards. And early on, these tend to be around 200,000 rubles. So that puts our total at 2.75 million for the first level. Now, let me just say that obviously we're not taking into account any of the prior modules too, because the assumption is that you'll be doing the rest of the hideout anyway. If you aren't, well, I think you should. So there you go. Anyway, for Bitcoin 1, currently you get one coin every 29 hours and 23 minutes, over a day per coin. At 120,000 rubles per Bitcoin, that's only 98k per day, so it takes 28 days to pay itself back. This is with a relatively cheap cost for GPUs too, so if they are more like 400,000 when you get to it, then this turns into 48 days instead. So with a month to two months on the payback time before you turn a profit at all, it's certainly not as compelling as it was in previous patches. And this is just level one. Still worth doing? Well, probably. So let's look at level two. This costs just under 7 million total to get there. And with 20 hours and 15 minutes per coin, it's 142,000 rubles per day, which returns in 50 days and up to 83 days with 400k cards, which is nearly three months. Depending on when you get to it, this may or may not be worth it to you. If a wipe cycle is approximately six months long, you also need some time to get to it as a player. So this doesn't leave a lot of time before the patch finishes. Bitcoin 3, however, is by far the craziest because you need to build Solar Power 1 before you can make it. This skyrockets the total cost up to nearly 28 million, leading to a payback time of 129 days, which is over four months, as you're only making 216,000 rubles per day. With 400k cards instead, this turns into 175 days or just under six months, which is typically the length of a Tarkov wipe. From this, it looks fairly clear that Bitcoin 3 isn't worth it outside of just looking for completionism, economically speaking. Although this is a good reason to finish it because what else are you gonna do with all that money really? A few things to note is that we may not see GPU prices at these high levels at all. If I remember correctly, the base price, so to speak, of GPUs is about 130k, which is where they sell to therapists. And if Bitcoins continue to be so low in value, then the demand may not be there for them in patch 13 at all. I think that it's unlikely that they stay under 200,000 for the whole wipe, as many players will be looking to fill it anyway, but the demand may well be lower in general, we will see. This also assumes that the Bitcoin prices haven't changed at all. We could see the value jump if real life prices recover, and that's definitely not for me to speculate on, but it could go either way. The flip side being that it could be even worse than we have looked at here. Also, one point that is actually massive that people don't talk about very often is the timing of your resources. Pouring money into the Bitcoin farm, especially level three with a very long payback time, implies that you would rather have the profits later on in the white than use that money now. In some cases that is valid, but in many ways you might just be better off using that cash to spend on your loadouts early. It's a very well trodden path that players grind all white for a few months and then end up finishing the hideout and have loads of money and gear at the end when it matters much less. I really think there's an argument to invest in yourself and your kits earlier, especially if you've played a few wipes and can balance your loadouts and economy well. Getting that raid, experience and survival progression ends up being more valuable in the long run than pure ruble count or stash value. This is because the ultimate resource becomes EXP in the late game and not money. I still think the hideout itself is worth it, generally speaking, because many modules have much faster paybacks like the workbench and are useful in progression in and of themselves to make finding raid items for quests, for example. But it's worth having a real think about whether you're better off investing in yourself now rather than saving for later with the higher versions of the farm. Let's touch on fuel cost briefly. Now, I never like including fuel in these calculations, which I know that some people disagree with, but when the fuel is shared by the workbench, the intel center, the water collector, the booze generator, the med station, and the nutrition unit, just looking at it in the context of the Bitcoin farm, I feel is a little unfair. 
The fuel that you actually use also changes with the hideout management skill too, just to add even more complexity to it. It really depends on how much you use the hideout itself, because the farm supports keeping the power on 24-7, and if you are clever with it and with which crafts you use that are longer and shorter, you can make the most of it. In my opinion, it only really matters if you want to work out the actual profitability of the whole hideout, which firstly I don't want to do, and because we know overall that it is profitable, what's the point in working it out? Fuel prices do change dramatically through the wipe though, which leads us onto our next topic of items that tend to go up in price as we progress through a patch cycle. Usually the issue with this kind of barter item investment is space and rubles early on. You can generally get metal fuel tanks for under 100k for the first month of a new wipe and around 50k for the first two weeks, so potentially worth picking up a couple to supercharge your early hideout profits, especially if you have space in a lucky scav junk box. Another fan favourite is stocking up on find in raid sugars, water filters and moonshine. These are all related, as the moonshine scav case is one of the best ways to get capper items passively while you raid or are offline, so plenty of players will run this even if it isn't profitable on its own. Moonshine tends to cap out under 300k, which because you need two sugars and a purified water to make it in the hideout, drives each item here to around 70k minimum in the later game. If you are feeling a bit canny, you can use the nutrition unit, which typically runs out of easily profitable crafts the earliest, to turn Al Yonkers from the flea market into fine in raid sugar. These prices are also tied together, so sugar is usually just two times an Al Yonker bar, however early on they will all be cheap, and keeping the sugar can make you some cool money in the mid game. As you can store them in the Holodilnik food and drinks container, you're often not missing out on space for other things this way either. Water filters also start off incredibly cheap, as it doesn't have any no-brainer crafts or barters early on, and no one has the water filter module. They'll go up in price as people unlock it, especially because in 12.12 this module was a super easy money printer due to the moonshine craft being shorter than the purification process, requiring players to buy in water if they wanted to run their booze generator continuously. Finally, a few items to keep an eye out for. These are useful to check on the fleet because last time they were a royal pain to get a hold of. The common theme of these items is that they are used for the higher level hideout modules, which means they don't need to be found in raid and are a prime contender to buy before anyone else needs them. If you do find one early and you're feeling real fancy, it may well be worth holding onto it and buying one from the flea market instead to do your hideout with later, keeping the find in raid version to sell in the future when everyone is scrambling around to get them. You might even be able to barter them for other fun items like Markroom Key, Rivals Armbands and other rare stuff when they're really in high demand. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. If you haven't been over to check out the Patreon page yet, we have early access to videos, resources from the content, for example, lowest recall guns, as well as some behind the scenes stuff on what I get up to. The link will be down below. Otherwise, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.